Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the organizers of the meeting for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so I, I'll be talking about uh, quasi biweekly mode of the Asian summer monsoon revealed in Bay of Bengal surface observations. I worked on this problem uh, during my PhD at the Indian Institute of Science with the help of my thesis advisors, uh, Professor Debashish Sengupta and uh, Professor Jay Sukatne. Also want to acknowledge all our co-authors uh, listed here. And uh, I want to thank uh, the Ministry of Earth Sciences and uh, National Monsoon Mission and IIT in Pune for supporting this research through the Ocean Mixing and Monsoon Initiative. So to start with, what is this quasi-biweekly variability? Uh, so the Asian summer monsoon has two dominant modes of interseasonal variability. One is the 30 to 60 day mode or the northward propagating mode. And the other is the 10 to 25 day mode, or, which is called the quasi biweekly mode. This is a northwestward propagating mode. So uh, the top panel you see here, this is a figure that I've taken from Fujinami et al. 2014. Um, I hope you can see my pointer. Uh, so the top panel here uh, shows the uh, time series of Aphrodite rainfall averaged over the Bangladesh region uh, for one summer monsoon season, June through uh, September, August in 1999. Uh, and the thin black line you see here is the uh, 7 to 25 day filtered rainfall anomalies. Uh, so you can see there is a very distinct 10 to 25 day time scale in the rainfall over Bangladesh region. And uh, the bottom panel you see here is uh, a composite map, which uh, they have selected all these days of uh, active uh, uh, monsoon phases uh, and made a composite for the all the summer monsoon seasons in the years to 1979 to 2007. Uh, the uh, left panel is uh, day minus five and the right panel is day zero. The colors you see here are the filter uh, seven to 25 day filtered rainfall anomalies and the arrows are the one uh, filtered uh, vertically integrated moisture flux. So you see that within five days the sign of rainfall over the Bangladesh region as well as uh, Central India can change signs. So there is a very distinct uh, 7 to 25 day time scale in the rainfall and moisture flux in the Bangladesh as well as like Central Indian region. So to understand the structure of this uh, quasi biweekly oscillation, uh, this is a figure on the right that I've uh, taken from uh, Law Walliser and uh, Goswami 2012. Uh, the top panel you see here is uh, uh, shows the uh, composite of uh, 10 to 25 day filtered uh, outgoing long wave radiation. Uh, for all the summer monsoon seasons in the years 1979 through 1998. Um, and uh, uh, for, for all those days where the um, uh, outgoing long wave uh, radiation is uh, negative in the central Bay of Bengal, uh, they have constructed a composite of the uh, 10 to 25 day filtered 850 millibar winds. And uh, this is what the uh, structure of the quasi-biweekly oscillation looks like in winds. Uh, it resembles a structure of that of an equatorial Rossby wave with a cyclonic vortex on top and an anti-cyclonic vortex below with a line of symmetry at about 10 north. And uh, this has a wavelength of about uh, 6,000 kilometers. And the westward propagating speed of this wave is uh, known to be four to five meters per second. So there have been many studies uh, which uh, uh, have shown that presence of this 10 to 25 day uh, time scale variability in rainfall, outgoing long wave radiation, winds, moisture, flux, et cetera. Uh, but the question we ask is, do we see this uh, time scale in the ocean variables as well? So to answer that question, I'll be using uh, um, mooring observations uh, from the 18 degree north, uh, north Bay of Bengal mooring observatory, which is marked by the star here. Uh, and it is about uh, 500 kilometers away from the Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna river mouth and the Iravadi river mouth. 
So here are the six years of uh, mooring observations from this uh, North Bay of Bengal Observatory at around, centered around 18 North. Uh, there are, there are uh, three moorings here, which are spaced uh, about 27 to 30 kilometers apart. Two of them are maintained by the National Institute of Ocean Technology in Ch uh, Chennai. And the other mooring was in Kois, uh, in one deployment until the year 2015 and later it was replaced by this woods hole mooring. So the top panel you see here is uh, temperature. The bottom panel is salinity uh, measured at these moorings uh, for these uh, years uh, shown in the bottom. And the measurement, the shallowest measurement depths are mentioned here. And uh, please note that uh, the same sensor has been used on these three moorings uh, to make these measurements. So there is a very, what we are seeing here is that there is a very distinct uh, seasonal variability in both temperature and salinity in the Bay of Northern Bay of Bengal. So in temperature, you see this uh, springtime warming every year, um, which is basically because there are uh, clear skies in spring and the ocean is just warming up, and there is wintertime cooling. And during the summer monsoon season, June through September, you see these uh, intra-seasonal uh, oscillations in temperature, uh, which are modulated by the active break cycles of the Indian summer monsoon. Uh, in salinity also, every year uh, you see this huge um, uh, six to eight PSU drop in salinity in uh, late August, early September. Uh, and uh, there is also a very significant drop in sea surface salinity happening in the winter time as well. So uh, Sangupta et al. 2016 have uh, shown that this drop in salinity uh, during the summer, mon uh, summer months, that is August, September, is mainly because of the uh, Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna River water that is being advected to the mooring location. And the wintertime uh, drop is uh, due to the Iravadi river water that is advected uh, to the mooring location. So we construct, uh, using this uh, six years of mooring observations, we construct a variance preserving spectra. Uh, so uh, of uh, temperature, salinity, wind speed, and the last panel here shows the temp, uh, spectra of the daily Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna river discharge for the years 1995 to 2013, taken from Papa et al. 2010. So the gray lines you see in each panel is the spectra for individual years, and the thick black line is a mean spectra for all the years. The red curve is the 99% significance level. So what you're seeing here is uh, there is a very uh, distinct 10 to 25 day time scale in uh, temperature, salinity, and wind speed. But if you look at the river discharge, there is a peak at about 40 days, but uh, there is really no um, 10 to 25 day time scale variability in the river discharge. This is suggesting that this quasi bi weekly variability in salinity is not coming from the freshwater input. Uh, and we'll understand in a bit uh, why do we see this time scale in salinity. Uh, some of uh, the recent studies by Professor uh, Balusu Subramanyam and his group have reported this uh, 10 to 25 day time scale in salinity based on satellite observations. So to understand this uh, quasi biweekly variability in ocean salinity, I'll be uh, focusing on uh, summer monsoon of 2015 because this is the year where this uh, 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 10 to 25 day time scale was very prominent in sea surface salinity. So the top uh, panel on the left here, uh, the black curve you see is the one meter salinity measured at the Woods Hole mooring, which is at 18 North, uh, the pink represented by the pink dot here. And uh, during uh, July through October in 2015. And the red curve here is uh, the sea surface salinity from SMAP satellite uh, at the mooring location. And uh, in, in this year, you see this very, uh, these three distinct uh, freshening and salting episodes at this mooring, which are about uh, 15 days apart. And uh, the SMAP uh, does a very good job in capturing this 15 day time scale in salinity. So to understand why this uh, freshening and salting is happening at the mooring, uh, we use the SMAP sea surface salinity and abyssal geostrophic currents 
to uh, actually uh, look at the spatial maps of the cell in P. And uh, the panel here on the left is uh, during uh, an example during a freshening episode. And on the right is a salting episode. So the colors are the sea surface salinity from SMAP and the arrows are the aviso surface geostrophic currents, uh, which represent the mesoscale flow in the Bay of Bengal. And the pink dot here is the mooring location. So you see during all these freshening periods, the fresh water, uh, the river water is being drawn to the mooring location by the flow between these two uh, counter rotating mesoscale eddies, sorry. So uh, the eddies are basically uh, drawing the fresh water from the northeast to the southwest to the mooring location. And uh, during the salting phases, that is when you see a rise in salinity at the mooring, you still have this mesoscale uh, eddy flow, but then the river water is pushed away from the mooring. So why is that happening? Uh, the top panel here again uh, shows a uh, 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 time series of uh, wind speed measured at this woods hole mooring in black and uh, one meter salinity uh, in blue. So you see this uh, changes in uh, salinity on this 15 day time scale are related to the winds, changes in the winds, uh, wind speed. So when the winds are low, you see the salinity is dropping at the mooring and when the winds pick up, the salinity rises at the mooring. So the bottom two panels here, um, the, the black dots are the three moorings in the North Bay of Bengal Observatory. The black arrows are the winds measured at these um, three moorings. And the red arrows are the surface currents and the blue arrows are the 60 meter currents. So during all the low wind episodes, that is when the mean wind is about two to five meters per second, uh, you see that the surface current uh, uh, is towards uh, southwest at all these three moorings, which is consistent with the mesoscale eddy flow that we have shown before. So this is uh, this mesoscale flow is drawing the river water to the mooring location. But as the winds strengthen, uh, when you have the mean wind speed is about eight to ten meters per second, the gray arrows here show the difference between the surface and sixty meter currents. And you see, uh, you see that these arrows are towards um, northeast, which is in the direction of the Ekman flow. So basically, when you have these strong winds, it's kicking off this shallow wind-driven Ekman flow, which is uh, acting to push the river water away from the mooring location. And that's why you see an increase of increase in salinity at the mooring. So at this point, I just want to show this plot from uh, Rita Brato's paper. Uh, he was a grad student at ICTS in uh, Professor Rama Govindrajan's group. And uh, he analyzed these uh, turbulence measurements at the Woods Hole mooring uh, in collaboration with uh, Emily Schreier and uh, Jim Moom at the Oregon State University. So this figure, the top panel shows the wind stress magnitude um, at the uh, Woods Hole mooring in the year 2015. And uh, the bottom panels show the log of uh, diffusivity values uh, estimated from uh, chi pods that have been mounted at, on this mooring at uh, selected depths. So you can see the depths marked here. Uh, the, Gray bar here show, marks the period before the arrival of the river water at the mooring, and the red uh, shading you see is the period uh, after the river water has arrived at the mooring. And uh, what they show is that the uh, diffusivity values uh, drop by more than an order of magnitude. Uh, at least you see that up to 65 meter depth once the river water has arrived uh, at the mooring. So this is a very uh, classic example of uh, how the turbulence is suppressed under the shallow uh, salinity stratified uh, layer. So what I want to draw your attention to is this. There are, uh, these are the three uh, episodes of uh, uh, enhanced wind stress that I have shown before. Uh, and uh, you can also see this 10 to 25 day time scale in the turbulence measurements as well, at least at 22 meter depths. It's not very prominent at deeper depths. 
So uh, the, the 10 to 25 day time scale in the winds is leading to uh, positive biweekly variability in sea surface salinity and also at, uh, uh, in the ocean turbulence at uh, 22 meter depth here. Maybe you'll hear more about this uh, turbulence uh, measurements in the next talk by Emily. Uh, moving on, we also see a quasi biweekly time scale in the coastal sea level. So the panel on the left here uh, shows the sea level uh, um, plotted during August, September 2015. Uh, the black is uh, the, the red curve is the uh, sea level from a uh, tide gauge at the Chittagong station, marked by the cyan dot in the inset here. And the black is the sea level from an ocean analysis data set, which is a daily 112 degree resolution. This ocean analysis uses uh, NEMO uh, version three ocean model and is posed by ERA interim uh, three hourly surface forcing. They assimilate uh, altimetry data, satellite SSD and in situ TS profiles from Argo, but uh, not satellite SSS. So the analysis does a very good job in uh, capturing these uh, changes in sea level uh, at Chittagong uh, station on uh, 50, uh, 10 to 15 day time scale. So the bottom panel here shows uh, sea level averaged in the north bay, north of 17 degrees north in black. And the blue is the uh, Mera 2 850 millibar uh, wind stress magnitude also averaged north of 17 degrees north. So you see these changes in the sea level uh, uh, on a 15 day time scale are very well related to the changes in the wind stress magnitude. So for all the three uh, low wind and uh, high wind episodes, we constructed composites. Uh, the top panel here shows a low wind composite and the bottom panel a high wind composite. Uh, the color is the sea level and uh, the arrows are the 850 millibar wind stress uh, magnitude from uh, Mera to reanalysis. So uh, uh, as the winds strengthen in the North Bay of Bengal, you uh, I have mentioned before that this is uh, setting up the shallow Ekman flow, which pushes the river water away from the mooring towards the coast. And that leads to a uh, uh, increase in uh, sea level along the uh, coast, uh, along the coast by about half a meter. So uh, coming to the last part of my talk, um, I want to answer this question, where are these high winds coming from? So here uh, I'm showing Hormola plots, which is uh, longitude and time maps um, of uh, trim rainfall and the Mera 2 850 millibar meridional wind. Uh, so the, 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 these have been averaged in the latitudinal bands of 10 to 16 north. Um, the, the, a white dotted line here you see is the 90 east longitude, which marks the center of the Bay of Bengal. Uh, and uh, please note that I've sh uh, shown only the positive values in the meridional wind. So in uh, 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 July through September 2015, what you see are these three enhanced episodes of uh, rainfall, uh, three episodes of enhanced rainfall and uh, associated with this uh, high meridional wind speed, which are about 14 and 20 days apart. And these signals are propagating all the way from uh, Pacific into the Bay of Bengal. Uh, and this westward, the speed of this uh, westward propagation is about five meters per second, consistent with the propagation speed of the quasi biweekly mode uh, reported in the previous studies. So to understand the spatial structure of these winds, um, so the, these are uh, the um, some maps that I'm showing on selected dates in September 2015. The colors you see are the uh, uh, trim uh, rainfall and the arrows are the Mera 2 850 millibar winds. Uh, and this is Bay of Bengal for your reference. The x-axis is longitude, y-axis is latitude. And on 10 September, you see this very nice zonal jet uh, that uh, extends all the way to the dateline. And uh, in the winds, you see this uh, cyclonic vortex and an anti-cyclonic vortex below, uh, which is uh, consistent with the uh, structure of the quasi-biweekly oscillation reported by Goswami et al. 
so and uh, this is spanning over like thousands of kilometers uh, and it resembles the structure of an equatorial Rossby wave. So when once this just jet goes unstable, you have these uh, cyclonic vortices that spin off and they start moving uh, northwestward over the Bay of Bengal. So that's why you see these uh, episodes of enhanced winds associated with rain uh, on uh, varying on a 10, uh, 20, 10 to 25 day time scale. So these synoptic systems are often embedded in this uh, northern vortex associated with the monsoon quasi-biweekly mode. So to summarize uh, uh, from the six years of mooring observations in the North Bay of Bengal, we find that there is a distinct uh, quasi-biweekly time scale in uh, surface salinity and wind speed. The 10 to 25 day time scale in salinity is not due to the uh, freshwater input. During the uh, weak phases of monsoon, uh, the Ganga Brahmaputra river water is advected to the interior of the bay by a mesoscale eddy flow. But uh, during the active spells of monsoon, the, there is a shallow wind-driven Ekman flow, which is uh, set up by these strong winds associated with the quasi-biweekly monsoon mode and the embedded uh, synoptic systems. And that, that carries river water to the northeast away from the mooring. And that leads to further leads to a rise in coastal sea level by about half a meter. And you even see this 10 to 25 day time scale in upper ocean turbulence as well. And uh, if you want to read more about this, you can look up our uh, paper, which was published in JGR Oceans in 2020. So it's really mm, amazing that uh, you can see from observations how this uh, ocean and atmosphere are uh, interacting with each other on a uh, 10 to 25 day time scale. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Leka. Uh, that was an interesting talk. Are there any questions for Sri Leka? We have time for a couple of quick questions. So I had a question, uh, Sri Leka. Uh, yes. This uh, quasi biweekly uh, mode. Uh, do you, do you see them even in quantities that are uh, measured subsurface? Because you mainly showed us uh, sea surface salinity and temperature. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned uh, the work of uh, Rita Brato and uh, Emily's group. I'm just wondering if you take a, a temperature or salinity uh, at subsurface uh, depths, do you see this uh, quasi biweekly variability in those as well? Uh, I think it's mostly in the near surface observations that you see uh, this uh, uh, 10 to 25 day time scale. So if you go deeper, uh, you, do, you do not get a very distinct 10 to 25 day time, time scale. Okay. Okay. Because so this is like... mainly like forced by the winds. It's, it's only the shallow, uh, the upper ocean that is being affected by this. Uh, the wind driven flow, at least in salinity. Okay, okay. And a really quick follow up question when you showed correlation with the wind speed, mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't the uh, wind direction also matter? Uh, you've plotted only the wind speed. Is... Yeah, but uh, so the wind direction is shown here. So in, in, in the bottom panels here, you see that so the, the the mean wind direction during this time is southwest because it's southwest monsoon season but yeah definitely the uh, so for for understanding the advection by the ekman currents and the mesoscale eddy flow the wind direction definitely matters and also the uh, the the the, di uh, the direction of this large scale gradient in salinity also matters Mm -hmm. So, depending on where the river water is and in which direction it's being advected, it can either uh, freshen or uh, salt in the, uh, either freshening or salting can happen uh, at one particular location. So, there is a question on the chat box. Jitendra asks, uh, is, are there changes in sea surface salinity due to rainfall? Uh, there can be, but uh, the the amplitude of the 
uh, the changes is very small as compared to uh, the uh, the uh, so yeah the there can be changes but uh, it's not very prominent the these these drop drop or rise in salinity which you see which are about three psu and uh, more than that it's mainly because of the horizontal advection of the river water it's it's not due to local rainfall of course rainfall is important because the the river discharge that you're getting into the bay is eventually because of uh, the rain that has occurred over the plains Hope, Thank hope you. Yeah. Okay. So thanks to both Siva and Sri Leka for their two interesting talks. We will uh, come back. Uh, if there are other questions for Sri Leka, I'm sure you can uh, message her directly or uh, you could continue to discuss with her during the next 10 minutes break. So we come back in 13 minutes. Our next speaker is uh, Emily Shroyer. Thanks, Sri Leka. <laughs>